everybody. Thank you for taking principle of a macroeconomic class with Dr. Jingzhe Jiang. So in this first video, and uh, I will talk about the um, general idea about this course. So what we try to achieve by learning this macroeconomic class. And after that, we will talk about for this specific chapter, chapter one, and what will be our learning objective. And then we will uh, look at what is the economy. So I'm sure you heard this term multiple times in a day. So we're gonna explain what is economy. So first of all, let's talk about what is this course about? So what is this course about? So first, it's uh, economic class. Uh, if you already taken the economic class, you know, when we talk about economics, it's not just about money. So it's not just about money. So then what is it? So generally speaking, learning economics actually is helping people to making decisions. So having people making decisions. So after you finish learning this class, and you should be able to understand how individuals and the business make economic decisions. So if you are thinking to run your business after graduation, so you have to know what is the motivation to uh, motivate the business to make a different kind of decision. And also for the individual consumers, how they make decisions, such as when you go to grocery store, you see all kinds of different brands of apples, Red Divisors, Gala, Gila, and the, um, uh, uh, Grand Smith. So why some people would choose Gila, even they don't care about the taste, the shape? Is that the price is the only reason to decide to make a decision? So obviously not. So every individual and business, when they are making decision, they are trying to consider the cost and benefits. And that's something we will learn in this class, how to understand individual and business making decision. And also we will learn how, uh, what determines how market shape economic outcomes. So why we have people are working so hard, they only get a minimum wage, and why some people they don't. And so how the market decides who get the most of the money and who get, the, and how we balance the inequality on the market. So we will look at what determine how market shape economic outcomes. And then also you will be able to know uh, how to examine the role that a government can and does play in reshaping economic performance. So I know many of you heard people talking about, oh, government should have fully control about the economy, which means they have to regulate what to produce. And if you really go to grocery store to buy groceries, if even you have money, you cannot buy it because government will decide what to what you can buy. So in that kind of economy, and you'll think, mm, maybe it's not really good for people to leave. And for some other cases, like what we are living now, and so if you have money, if you have income, you can go to grocery store to buy whatever you want to buy. If the product itself will not impose harm to other people. So now that's a big question. So what is the role for government to play in the economy? And also after learning this class, you'll be able to understand how we ourselves can make a better economic decisions. So think about uh, before you click the play uh, for this video, what is option for you? So you may can spend time to hang out with your friend, or you may spend time to watch a movie, but you decide to watch the lecture. So good job. I want to let you know you make a good decision. And also it's a good economic decision because every effort you put in this class is not only contribute to the credits, but also contribute to your future career. And I do hope you can find a good job after you graduate from Edinburgh University. So now uh, let's look at uh, what is this chapter about? So what is this chapter about? So for this first chapter, we will focus you, your attention on the core problem of the scarcity. So we're definitely going to spend a lot of time to explain what is the definition for scarcity and why it is so important for economy. And then we're going to look at the four factors of the production. And we will look at they are actually limited. And also when we look at the four um, factor of the production, we usually will require people to making choices. And so we we'll also need to understand how to illustrate uh, how to um, how to il how the full factor will be illustrated with the production possibility curve. So, what is the definition for productive possibility curve? So, actually, I think that's our, is our first model we're gonna learn in this class, which is production possibility curve. And then uh, you also will should uh, be able to compare the different economists according to how they answer the three fundamental questions of economy. 
what, how, and for whom. So when we talk about different economists, I want to give you an example. So you should know the economy in North Korea are totally different from uh, the U.S. So what are differences? So how can we characterize the North Korea's economy and how can we characterize the U.S. economy? So generally speaking, for learning macroeconomic class, you will feel sometimes it's a bit challenging because compared with the microeconomic class, so macroeconomic class is very abstract. This is not something you you really can feel every day. So for the macroeconomic class, it's really talk about how the country is running and how the government making decision. So you will find it will be very very helpful once you get more experience, uh, working experience, because you will find your daily life are highly impacted by the government policies, and uh, especially if you if you are econ major and you get a real interest in the econ, you will have a higher chance to work for the government. So then the macroeconomic class is so important for your future career because you potentially will help the government to give them advice how to make a better decision. So this is a, about a, our first chapter when and what you are expecting to learn from this first chapter. So <clears throat> first, uh, before we move on the, the to the key concept about scarcity. And let me do a little bit short introduction about this chapter. So when uh, our new uh, our president Trump become president, so we all have expectation, right? So what expectation? So we hope he can publish good government policies to help solve economic problems. So what are the economic problems? Can you name a few? Yes, I'm sure you know. So number one, uh, you you may heard from your parents, the income inequality. So the income inequality. So that's what big deals. And then the tax reform, the health care. Yes, those are all economic problems. So we hope the government can set a good policy to help us to resolve the pro those problems. So in order to achieve a society that everybody will get a benefit from the government policies. So no matter what kind of government policy they will make, so the big question facing the government is they need to make a choice among all different um. All, uh, all different options, so they have to make choices. So when we talk about economic choices, it will always revolve around scarce resource, scarce resource, which means the resources are limited. So think about government budget. So every sometime you hear the news about the government going to shut down because the budget didn't pass. So why the budget didn't pass? Because we have limited resource. So in order to balance out every party's interest, we have the fighting for those limited resource. So which means if when you if you feel you are making decision, that means you're facing scarce resource. Scarce resource. So think about for our presidents when they are trying to making policies. So what they have to consider. So what they have to go through their mind before they can before they can uh, pass any uh, laws or act. So first question they need to think about: What do we want the economy to produce? So do we want to produce more crude oil, or crude oil, coal, or we should produce more uh, renewable energy? So they have to consider those questions, and then they also need to consider how can we assume that assure their outcomes? Do we have enough labor? Do we have a, a qualified technology? So in order to achieve the the amount of the product we want to produce. And the third question they might need to think about is, will the outcome of the economy be distributed fairly? So will all the income will go through the rich people? Or how can we balance that out so that the people who are working hard and uh, they will be able to get enough, uh, the reasonable amount of incomes? So also they need to consider, will the environment be protected? So we talk about a um, crude oil company, so they are... Uh, fracking the uh, uh, natural gas on the ground. So it's nice to, to bring up the more resource for us to use, but at the same time, that pollute environment. So if you don't know what is called fracking, and please Google it, and you'll find a lot of interesting story uh, related to fracking. So it's really um, bring a lot of damage to the environment. So when government passing a policy, they have to consider will the environment be protected? 
and also needing to consider what role should the government play in answering all the above questions. Should they play like a main player? So not only making rules, but also try to get involved. So I don't think that would be a good idea, right? So think about it. And then we actually will address this problem in a later chapter. And also they need to consider how much should we rely on the private sector? So should we uh, let a private sector to run by themselves? So think about the uh, shooting the satellite into the space. So back two years ago, usually it's NASA run the program. So NASA spent the government money to send the satellite into the space. But now if you look at uh, the whole structure, so the NASA only charging uh, the, in the R&D, the research and investment, uh, research and development, and but actually in terms of the setting, uh, set of the uh, satellite into the space, usually it's run by the private company. So do you think the government making wrong decision to switch to the private company? And you can send email to tell me your thoughts. But a uh, later chapter, we're actually going to discuss so why the private sector is so important in the in our economy. So we cannot let government run everything. The government should uh, just try to regulate, try to assist. Government should never be um, jump in to run the economy. That are actually going to create a lot of problems. So anyway, so when we are talking about the core issue facing every country, to summarize what I just mentioned, those questions, we can find every country facing three core choices, three core choices. And so they are all fundamentally connected with the limited resource. So if the resource is abandoned, we don't need to make a, a core choices. So for every nation, US, China, Thailand, uh, North Korea. So every country, they have to make a decision. So these are the three core choices they have to make. The number one is what to produce with our limited resource. So what to produce? Should we produce more uh, high technology product or should we produce more labor intensive product like clothes, uh, pants? So that is the number one question that every nation has to answer. And the second question they have to answer is how to produce the goods and the services we selected. So do we use more labor or do we use more uh, capital like uh, machines? So that's the second question the country has to answer. So the third important uh, answer that each country has to answer is for whom goods and services are produced. So which means for the final product, how can we distribute the final product so that uh, we can be uh, so everybody in the nation will feel equal, uh, fairly treated. So now that actually is a big issue, the income inequality. So the huge income gap indicating that our the government didn't answer for whom question well. So um, a later chapter we will learn what will be the possible tool the government can use to help to close the income gap, to close the income gap. So those are the three question every government has to answer. So um, this is about the core issues. So now let's back to the question. So what is the economy? So what is economy? So not what is economics? So what is economy? So generally speaking, economy actually is us. It's not something strange. So it is us. So we are part of the economy. So the economy, it is the grand sum of all our production and the consumption activities. So it's including Apple producing iPhones, it's including you coming to school to develop your skill, eventually giving it back to the world, to the community to contribute your talent to help the growth of the economy. And also including your every daily trip to the grocery store to buy milk, bread. So everything you do, everything you involve is part of the economy. So generally speaking for the United States, and it is the collective behavior of 320 320 million individuals. So everybody's behavior contributed to the economy. So the economy is simply an ab abstraction that refers to the sum of all our individual production and our consumption activity. So in this sense, the economy is us, the aggregation of all of our supply and demand decisions. So that's what we're going to learn during the whole semester. Supply demand for all of us and how the government can use the right policy to guide the economy going in the right direction so that everybody will feel it's fair and we will feel we want to work hard and we want to feel we want to contribute to the economic growth. So um, 
Anyway, one thing I want to mention is sometimes we may not always be happy with the outcome、uh, output of the economy.、Uh, however, we cannot ignore the link between individual action and the collective outcomes. So that is the first lecture for our first chapter. Hope you enjoyed it. So in next video, we will talk about our first very important economic concept: scarcity. So what is, is scarcity?